Let us pray. Father, we want to commit this time into your hand. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to give us understanding upon the Word of God again. As we look at the book of Acts, help us, O oh Lord, to really draw lessons from it, especially looking at the characteristic of the early church, how we would uh, we can apply those lessons to the your church today. Lord, we commit all this into your hand. Bless us, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we have gone through uh, Acts uh, about seven chapters. Now we have reached Acts chapter 8, looking at the core value of the church. How would you measure the early church thus far? The one that we have listened for the last few weeks. Uh, how would you measure it? What makes the early church? Is it the number? The 3,000, then later on become 5,000? Is it the massive baptism, the number of baptism? <laughs> or the, because they, they devoted themselves to the apostle teaching, the fellowship, breaking of bread, the prayer? Is that the value, how you measure the early church? Or because they sell, they sold their possessions and share things in common and help those who are in need? Is that the core value because of welfare or because of the miracles, signs, wonders or even casting out demons? Is that decide the church is healthy or a lot? I mean, the, the value of the church? Uh, well, if we look at those and look at today, what is today? Uh, what makes the church today? What is our core value here? Is it the attendance on Sunday? Now I think a bit difficult. <laughs> we are not talking about attendance. We are talking about view. How many view on the YouTube channel? That is that will decide uh, the church to measure the church, or because of the offering. <laughs> we just gone through some report and look at the statistic throughout the diocese. Uh, is it the offering will decide the core value of the church? Or because of the welfare works, how many people that we had helped, how many budget we put in the welfare fund. And now a lot, well, recently there's a popular preacher. <laughs> I've done a lot of things that are, are bring a lot of massive conversion, so-called. Uh, is that how we measure the church today? Are we going to do the same thing so that people will think that we are a good church? And uh, is it because the youth ministry wow, have a big youth ministry that we will measure the church as healthy? Or children ministry or oh, a children church? The children church is very good. Is that how we look at the church? Uh, what decide the core value of the church? Today we're going to look at Acts chapter 8. Learn from the early church. What is the true measure months for the church how do we do look at the core value of the church why the church exists today eh? we will learn from the early church we want to pray that the lord will help us as we continue in our journey in this year it will be good for us to re-evaluate the value of the church amen so here in Acts chapter 8 i would like to share with you uh, three character, um, not just three. It could be four, but I only take three out of those. And uh, the story continues. Remember, after Stephen's stoning, uh, he became the first martyr. Then immediately after that, in Acts chapter eight, you see that one verse. The verse started with, and saw a former name for Paul, the apostle Paul, the great apostle Paul. A proof of their killing him. Mean saw, look at that incident, had made him happy also. Wow, I find something that I can do eh? uh, for the religion, eh? for uh, my faith, so called. So, here, first, I want to share with you this first character saw the persecutor in. Verse 1 to verse 3. 
and Saul was there giving approval to his death. On the day a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem, and all except the apostle were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church, going from house to house. He dragged off men and women and put them in prison. Who is Saul? Or I would say Paul. <laughs> he was born in Tarsus in Sicily, uh, Cilicia, according to Acts chapter 22. Then he is a uh, Hebrew of Hebrew uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Then he is the son of Pharisees. Also from Acts chapter 22, then he was a Roman citizen uh, in Acts chapter 16 that people want to buy that, use money to buy that citizenship. But uh, Paul was born as one and uh, educated in Jerusalem by Gamaliel. Remember the famous the teacher of the law that had defended the situation in uh, Acts chapter 6. Huh? So you know Gamaliel, a famous teacher, taught him well. And uh, of course, he was a devoted a Pharisee. Saul himself was mentioned in Acts chapter 26. And then if you want to measure Saul <laughs> or Paul, <laughs> uh, you want to measure him by law, he is blameless. According to Philippians chapter 3, verse 6. Then you look at uh, how he was described in Galatians chapter 1, verse 14, that he is the most promising young Pharisees and on his way to become a great leader of Jewish faith. Why this background will help you, help us to understand more about Saul as a persecutor. He, why he that at that time so-called believed in God but persecute Christian. For him, the passion, the uh, as a defender, to defend his faith because look at Gamaliel um, definitely this teacher have a good will of God how he had the godly or right perspective looking at God for himself that's why he say you know if you're against uh, if this is from men it is okay hey it will die off but if it is from God you will find yourself against God so this is how he taught uh, Paul and Paul brought up in that way as a young person to look at this is the only faith this is the only God that he will believe and he had put himself in that way how he come about to defend anything that's come against or disrupt or distract this religion so he will write out other religions he will destroy the church for the sake of uh, defending uh, the belief that he had by believing God, good passions, zealous for God, but wrong motive. But whatever the case, the incident of Stevens had triggered him had you know, to do something right as he had as his belief. He wanted to do that in order, like I say, to defend of his faith by destroying the church. So he go about persecute the church. Of course, on uh, what had mentioned in Acts chapter eight, verse one, just now, because of all this, all the disciples and the apostles scattered around Judea and Samaria. Okay? So this, we look at this kind of persecution. Sometimes it's good for the church. It's definitely it's good for them. Look at Matthew chapter five, verse ten to verse twelve. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely so say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So it's nothing new. Persecution is nothing new. In fact, if we do not if as a true disciple of God, uh, Christ, if we follow Christ daily, taking up His cross and follow Him daily, and we do not face any persecution, we might put some question mark on our faith. Because persecution is guaranteed. 
<laughs> you don't ask for it, but it will come. Persecution will make us stronger. Persecution will make us, will kind of like a wake up call for us. Sometimes we are so, uh, we are so comfort, we are so comfortable. Uh, we stay in a zone that whereby we do not have anything uh, that coming against us. There's a no storm. There are no unexpected events. But since last year, March itself is a wake up call for all of us. Uh, you might see it as a difficulty. Some people might see it as a persecution. That have put the church, has stopped the church in physical worship. You don't need politicians. You don't need any agenda. Or other people try to persecute the church, close down the church, burn the church. No. It just takes one virus and it has stopped the church, stopped his people, God's people, to go to church to worship him. You see? But you see, we use persecution as an opportunity. We scatter. They scatter to Judea and Samaria. We scatter back our home. <laughs> Uh, doing what we call online worship service, uh, we will st we will still, hey, we will worship the Lord. In fact, right now some poppy, some of us not just worship in Good Sam, but then some of us worship in London on Sunday. Some of us worship on in America on Sunday. Some people, my friends from America, he watch and they worship uh, service, join our worship service here uh, in Good Sam. Huh? Amazing. He said, persecution will stop us. No. Always I believe things that don't kill us will always make us stronger. Amen. So in this persecution breakout, they, I believe they understand this truth as what is guaranteed from the Lord Jesus Christ himself in that Sermon of the Mount. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man who are persecuted because of righteousness. So if persecution comes because of righteousness, it's not because of we make mistake. Don't go and make mistake. Oh, hey, you make a mistake, then put in the jail. Oh, I'm under persecution. Eh? Like someone said to me before, uh, yeah, I'm under persecution now because I cannot summon, he said. I said, why? Eh? Because I go and uh, buy something for the church, I double part all. I double part, then the police summon me. Oh, I'm under persecution. No, it's your own mistake. That is not for righteousness that is our own mistake but today if we truly because we just preach the word of God we are doing something I consider as righteousness because of righteousness we refuse to accept corruption we refuse to cheat we refuse to do something that against the Lord one of my friends uh, he was a well I think he is still a policeman um, no uh, he because he refused to take corruption he refused to take some under table money as the others have doing so but then he refused to do it so he was kind of stopped for promotion you know we hear story like that but people because they stand on the in the name of the righteousness they are you no know, they are able to say no to those yes they are under persecution but you see they are blessed why right? So if we come back to Acts chapter 8, verse 4, what happened to those people, the disciples there, or the believer? Uh, here you see, in verse 4, those who have been scattered preached the word wherever they went. The word scattered here, diaspero. Diaspero means scatter seed. No, if you bring back to what happened to what Jesus said, that seed, you just scatter the seed, sow the seed. Sow the seed to the good soil. Eh? Just continue to scatter the seed. Uh, uh, as they say, preach here, to, to preach the gospel, to evangelize. That is what we do. Even though under persecution, but that create a core value for the church. That's why I've said from the beginning, it will be good sometime if the church under difficulty, if the church under persecution. But remember, in those period of time, that we need to hold firm to our faith and continue to do what is the priority. What is the 
commandment that the Lord asks us to do. That is to preach the word. In this time, about well, not a year yet, until much, uh, we have gone through this pandemic for a year. How many words of the gospel? How many words that contain the good news, the gospel, or the word of God that we have preached to our friends? We have delivered this message to them. My brother and sister in Christ, believe in Christ, have faith in Christ. Even though you think like this is a persecution, or in the future, you might face some persecution. We don't know yet. Saba is still, yeah, considered a good state. Yeah, uh, we still have that freedom of worship. But what if those days come, like what had promised from the book of Revelation? Where are we going? Hide, abandon our faith, or we choose to continue to preach the word. That is the core value of the church. The church will never stop preaching the word of God to people. Amen. I, I want to encourage you. If you cannot do it, we might share some of our sermons or some of our sharings to our friends. Sometimes even uh, uh, just a picture, a picture of uh, some words, some good Bible words there, which after you pray as a guided, as you are guided by the Holy Spirit, you send this message to your friends. You know that you have preached the word of God to that person. Okay? Of course, eventually, you will ask the Lord to give you the gift of preaching the word in season and out of season. Just send good news. Just share good news. Stop sharing those negative things. Stop sharing those uh, words that is, uh, uh, no, didn't really bring hope at all. Okay? So we want to share words that will bring hope, words that will bring peace, words that will bring joy, definitely news that will bring salvation. Amen. Let us use this opportunity as whatever that heeding is uh, well, uh, or is heeding us, uh, we will continue to preach the word. As we scattered, like a scattered seed, we go around and spread the word of God. Amen. Well, of course, the second one that we want to look at is Philip, one of the seven. The, the deacons that have chosen to distribute the food in Acts chapter, five, uh, chapter 6, you remember? Uh, chapter, uh, yeah? no? So that is the, one, the Philip that we are looking at. Philip as the preacher. Acts chapter, five, Acts chapter 8, verse 5 to verse 8. Philip went down to a city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. When the crowd heard Philip and saw the miracle signs he did, they all paid close attention to what he said. With shrek, evil spirit came out from many, and many paralytics and cripples were healed. So there was a great joy in the city. <laughs> Persecution, proclamation, equal to great joy. Philip, I believe, at that time, uh, well, not just him, others, I think, they also choose to go to Samaria. Because for the typical the uh, Hebraic Jews, they are kind of faithful Jews. They always stick to their temple and also their culture. Eh? But it's more of the problem of the Hellenistic Jews, eh? the hybrid, uh, hybrid uh, people. Uh, so, for Philip to go to them, I think it's easier for them to stay in Jerusalem. If because of persecution, they scattered. Philip, I believe, he have chosen that place to go. Of course, definitely the Holy Spirit had guided him lah. <laughs> for very obvious. But what I want to bring us to the attention is that in verse four, as he preached the word. The people preach the word. That preach is just preaching the gospel to evangelize. But here, the word that used for Philip and proclaim the Christ, the word means uh, to announce as a uh, herald, you know? uh, as the angel herald sing. That proclamation. Huh? So when you proclaim or announce as a herald, everyone must listen. 
That's why I believe, of course, apart from preaching the word, he also performed a lot of miracle signs. That in verse 6, he said, all of them, eh, they all paid close attention to what he said. Ha. Preacher, today we will use opportunity to preach the word of God. Some people will have a good gift to deliver the message in well, PowerPoint, video clip, stories, jokes. Ah, some by just just very firm and deliver the message of God. But ever, whatever the means or method we are we use to deliver, but we should announce like a herald, announce that news that everyone should listen. We announce in such a way this is the needs of the people, the only news that people want to hear. We announce in such a way not to just show that it is important but also to show that our faith what we believe if we truly believe christ is the only one who saved christ is the only one who can give us that salvation only through him only through him there are no other salvation at all so if we believe that we should announce like one as we announce like a herald to let people know hey right, this is from god and the people will pay that attention to us. So let us deliver that gift, deliver the skill, and ask the Lord to help us uh, to be, well, some people say anointed preacher, okay? or motivated preacher, whatever. If you preach the word of God and get people to know Christ and life change, why not? Why not? We can sit down to criticize a lot of preaching whether that preaching is boring, interested, uh, got substance or not. But different methods, different uh, way of delivery, uh, definitely it will attract different kind of people. But still the same. We should announce like a herald. Huh? Uh, just like Philip. So as he announced that, you see how uh, powerful Philip as the evangelist in Acts chapter 21, verse 8 to verse 9, leaving the next day, we reach Caesarea and stay at the house of Philip, as Paul described the evangelist, one of the seven. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. Eh? That is Philip. I wish all of us can someday people describe us. Where are you going in Chinese New Year? If we can, uh, if we can, uh, we can go and visit. If we can go and visit, uh, eh? uh, I'm going to uh, uh, the house of Stephen, the evangelist. Wow. Eh? I think that will be the core value of the church. Eh? Why is the people, who are the people in the church of Good Samaritan? Oh, they are all preacher. They are all evangelists. They are all announced the good news like a herald. Wow, fantastic. All right? So, no persecution and bring a wake up call. People scatter the seed, pronounce or proclaim or preach the good news. That's how the church is supposed to be. Stop. We will not stop preaching the word. Whatever the situation, we ever, or whatever channel or matters, we will preach the word as long as we are giving the opportunity. Amen. Because it is important as Romans chapter 10, verse 14 to verse 18 say, How then can they call on the one they have not believed? And how can they believe in the one who whom they have not heard and how can they hear without someone preaching to them and how can they preach unless they are sent and it is written how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news but not all the Israelites accepted the good news for Isaiah say Lord who have believed our who has believed our message consequently faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ but I ask did they not hear? Of course they did. The voice is, has gone out into all the earth. 
their words to the ends of the world. Wasn't that the first uh, command? Uh, God, not well, the command. I want to say the first, the command that the Lord had given to the disciple. Eh? Wait there, you will receive the power and to be my witness from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Think about it again. Why Philip ended up in the city of Samaria? Wasn't that one of the commandments, one of the commands from the Lord that they bring the good news after they scattered from Jerusalem, then Judea and Samaria. But very soon you see from there, they went throughout the world and even come to this corner of Saba. Amen. So let's not stop preaching the word. Learn from Philip. And I believe that is a major and important uh, value as we use that to measure the church. Last, we will look at Simon. Simon the sorceress. But here, I will say Simon the premature. Acts chapter 8, verse 8, 9 to verse 13. In all the attractions, all those people who pay attention to him, one of those. Now for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in a city that amazed all the peoples of Samaria. He boasted that he was a, someone great and that all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed, This man is the divine power known as the great power. They followed him because they had amazed them for a long time with his magic. But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God and in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized and followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. Amazing. Eh? The one that is supposed to be popular, uh, well accepted among the people. Now, the people who follow Simon have followed Christ and was baptized. Simon himself also gave himself at, uh, as he believed and baptized. But things happen. Simon, is that a true and genuine conversion? Yes or no? Oh, probably. We don't know. Okay? Uh, we, we, we are not in that position to judge on him. But look at the records here. Why I put him as premature? Uh, look at Acts chapter 8, verse 18 to verse 22, 23. When Simon saw the Spirit was given to the laying, of the, laying on the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability to so that everyone who on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. This after verse 13, uh, no, things happen. Of course, a lot of people came to know Christ. Then, no, kind of revival happened there. And Peter and Joel, oh, they all were sent from Jerusalem. And find out what happened in this so-called half-breed or hybrid people, Samaria. Okay? So when, he, when they arrived there, they also asked them uh, whether they had received the Holy Spirit. Eh? Uh, but then they say no. no. Uh, uh, they, because at verse 16 say the Holy Spirit had not yet come to any of them. They simply baptized in the name of Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Some of that triggered Simon. We, oh, now this is a key. After, I'm not quite sure how long that he had followed Philip. Hmm, how are? Uh? How he get this power? Uh, uh, probably he want to use that power to increase his popularity. Since he's a great power, now he wants greater power. So he had that con mindset that find out that key, find, him, find out that secret of the power, then he can also do so. So when he saw Peter and John, they all lay hands, that people received the Holy Spirit. Definitely, there are some manifestations happened. So he come up with this so the uh, decision to ask, uh, uh, can I offer you some money? Give me this ability. 
so that I can also do this to lay hand, people will receive the Holy Spirit. Because what he did, that magical things and so on, uh, yes, it's kind of create popularities on him. People listen to him, amazed to what he did. But after Philip came, everything changed. Wow. So now he want to find somebody, something else to increase his popularity. Oh, so definitely this kind of laying on hands somehow attract a lot of people. So Peter, of course, answered him in verse 20. May your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part in share or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent for the wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps He will forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captives of sin. Okay? That is his problem. I witnessed someone who came to the church with different motives. At first, they are kind of very genuine. Only later on, you see that they are premature. Um, they didn't grow in their faith. So what happened then is that they used the church uh, to do business uh, because there's some, you know, there's a lot of people in the church. Ma. So you go to the church, you get 10%. Yeah, it's so good. There even one case where people will accuse, they accuse the pastor. Oh, church, you say full of loved one. Now I already ask you, ma, I ask you to help me to do something. Hey, just give me some list. Hey, uh, 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 to, to give me some business hey, so that I can sell uh, no things to them, sell my product to them. Just because the pastor refused to do so, he said the pastor, no love. And the church is no love. Hey, then he left the church. Hey, not because no love, but then premature. We might argue like, it is okay, some people say. Huh? As long as they come to the church first. There are a lot of attractions in the church. Like for instance, uh, we give them a meal, a good meal, a good dinner, a good lunch, or a good gift. Eh? So if you come, I will give, give a good gift. So some people might come to the church because of that. Eh, because we're looking at uh, their free lunch. Eh, seriously, seriously, I met someone. Uh, he came to the church because of that. Uh, well, of course, he will say, I received Christ, even he attempted to receive the Holy Communion. Uh, he looks so holy. Uh, he looks so Christian. Uh, um, but then, only later on, we found out he actually came to the church because of food, eh? because of food, that's it. When no food, when uh, eventually, uh, I don't know what happened really, uh, people stopped him to get the food because he's not belong to that meeting. Like for instance, senior citizen, uh, he's not. But then he go and eat until somehow I think probably one or two members try to ask him politely to not to take uh, because the food is for the senior citizen. But yeah, things happen. Eh? Uh, we have people like that. Is it okay or not? Some people will say, as long as they are in the church, why not? Uh, when I first learned Alpha, one pastor taught me this Chinese, uh, 口开心都开, 心开圣灵来. So Alpha always start with food. So as long as he comes for the food, it is okay. Eh? But if he comes for the food, the mouth will open. When the mouth open, then the heart will open. When the heart open, then the Holy Spirit will come. Mm, yeah, sometimes it's work, sometimes it's not. We have people who are truly a genuine uh, believer. They really repent and give to the Lord and they, they grow in maturity, but some premature. Eh, they didn't grow at all. Eh, basically, they just want some benefits. I hope Simon here, he didn't record it. He didn't record in Acts chapter 8. I hope Simon will have that true repentance after Peter kind of confronted him. Well, if today we do have that, we need to look at them not like uh, 
asking them to leave the church. No, there is someone in the church we can help. Uh, just like Peter helped Simon to get that person into maturity. So this is how the church should do. Our core value is that to help people to grow. As we preach the word of God, as the first people come to God, no matter what reason behind, what kind of motive, but we know in God have it grace and mercy. Wasn't that all of us also was once like that before? Do we really think that we have that true, like really genuine, 100% pure motive? Some way along the line, we also acted like what Simon said, wicked. There's a wickedness in us. But we, we repented. We repented. We made our way, we made a journey back on the right path again. True or not? Yeah. So we, we, we need to help. We need to understand the situation. Like Matthew chapter 13, verse 18 to verse 23. Listen then that to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil at once comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on the rocky places is the one who hears the Lord, hears the word of God and at once receives it with joy. But since he has not root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble persecutions comes because of the word, he quickly fall away. The one who received the seeds that fell among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but the worries of the life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke him, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on a good soil is the one who hears the word and understands it. He produces crops yielding a hundred, sixty, and thirty times what was sown. That is the value of the church. That we want to pray and see more good soil in the church. That when seed scattered among them, sow in their heart, will bring her hundred, sixty, and thirty fourth. If we really want to see how to measure the church, is it because we have thousands of people in the church consider a good church we want to see how many of those are matured are on the good soil okay so this is the core value all right so together we see this what happened in chapter 8 had decide the core value of the church at those days persecutions from Saul it's okay we scattered and preached the word of God okay Philip Apart from taken as a distribution of the food, I think he also followed the footsteps of Stephen. As he scattered under the persecution, he went to the city of Samaria and preached and proclaimed Christ like announced as a herald and let people know this is the most important news they need to hear and they must hear it. As he preached, a lot of people even turned from Simon he have even grabbed the attentions that they have once put to the world, now have put to God. Amen. That is Philip. Preacher. If we only people who can preach, then people can hear the message, then they will have faith. And they put their trust, their belief in Lord. Amen. Of course, let's pray that the church will continue to become matured. So this measure of the soil how many pre-matured or how many matured christian in the church that will bring up whether there's a value of the church or not we don't need to see numbers of course quantity is very important but quality is equally more important right that we should bring that into our lifestyle we should bring that to the ministry because that jesus asked us he do not call just believer he called us to follow him as a disciple as he called us to take up his cross daily and follow him even he said if you love one another then people will recognize you as the my disciple not just believer 
So that I think is very important for us to continue in our discipleship training. And uh, some of us are not belong into the DD group. May I ask you eh, to really go into the DD group to learn the Word of God, to learn and share uh, that core value together, eh, to really make the church to become a church that full of good soil, who was rich seed, the Word of God had fall on it, and bring up 160 and 34. That is one of my prayer to all of us. Amen. So let us all really uh, learn from this uh, core value of the early church and uh, how we can apply it to the church today. Persecution plus preaching, then of course the great joy of the city. How that you see the church will continue to grow. Let's prepare the church in such a way because after all this MCO, whatever pandemic finish, uh, the church will face her own pandemic. Seriously, how many people were left in the church? So may I ask all of us to really help one another, stir up one another as we come back together and continue on to be faithful in worship the Lord, whether on weekend services and also joining one of the DT group and have the fellowship with one another until whereby we will come back, we will meet each other physically. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we pray that it will help us, help us to continue to strive for this goal, that knowing that what is the true core value of the church, help us not to forget whatever circumstances Whatever situation, even the persecution, we will not stop preaching the word of God. Help us to be like Philip even, to announce like a herald, to proclaim Christ to the world. Father, we want to pray that you help us from everyone, elders to the youngest. We will take whatever opportunity in front of us that we will go out and continue to preach the word. Father, we pray that you help us to grow into maturity so that they will measure up the true value of the church as you have called us, not just a believer, but as a disciple. Father, we commit all this into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.